Hello everyone, ever since the first mention of Vulcan, people have been treating the other gaming engines rather poorly. It's almost as if gamers have some shared repressed memory of being dragged into a public toilet by OpenGL while DirectX molested them. So since its appearance, Vulcan has developed some sort of mythical status, with people telling each other tales of its prowess on Reddit and the forums like some kind of 21st century Prester John. With X-Plane being the very first of the big sims to adopt Vulcan, I was very keen to take a look at the performance differences. Before I bury myself up to my balls and frame rates and such things, I think it's important to delve into the history. OpenGL was first released by Kronos Group in 1992. The first version of DirectX was released in 1995, and coincidentally the first version of X-Plane was released in 1995. The extremely affable and talented creator of X-Plane, Austin Meyer, has explained that he went with OpenGL for one major reason. He wanted X-Plane to be available on all platforms, and at the time of development, DirectX wasn't really a thing. I disagree with this because in my view, if you buy a Mac for gaming, you have to be more than a couple of cocks short of an orgy. They have limited compatibility, limited utility, and extremely limited upgradability. Additionally, you're paying a price tag that's normally reserved for products manufactured by skilled laborers in the first world, and receiving a product, albeit with good components, that's manufactured by virtual slaves in the third world. Yes, I know, dear viewer, this video is supposed to be about X-Plane and Vulcan. So consider the Apple rant a bonus feature, buy a PC or a console for gaming and shut the fuck up. Furthermore, if you've ever watched a video by Ostrom Meyer, you'll know you just can't stay mad at the guy for long. He's just that nice. Additionally, he was probably just trying to make Apple customers feel better about being fucked by their own feckless consumer choices. Although not a factor in their decision-making process, it is a good thing that subsequent iterations of X-Plane remained on the OpenGL platform. As I've been reminded quite recently, early versions of DirectX were fucking horrendous. DirectX versions 1 through 7 probably accounted for more gamer deaths than type 2 diabetes and masturbatory exhaustion combined. So to return to my opening analogy, as a young proto-gamer, OpenGL was like a trusted family friend, constantly nurturing and encouraging me. On the flip side, DirectX would occasionally step out of the shadows dressed as a clown, run his fingers across his throat with a menacing grin while playing pocket billiards with his other hand, like some sort of digital John Wayne Gacy. However, that's not the entire story. As time progressed, OpenGL more or less stagnated, while DirectX drastically improved. Versions 9, 10, 11 and 12 established DirectX as the top dog for gaming. And here, ladies and gentlemen, is where we rejoin the X-Plane OpenGL story. You see, by the time X-Plane 10 had launched, the scales had completely fallen with regard to OpenGL. Rather than seeing it as the nurturing protector of my proto-gaming years, when X-Plane 10 launched, I realized it had been grooming me the whole time. Through every iteration of X-Plane 10, and all the previous iterations of X-Plane 11, it fucked me in every orifice, and even made a few more so it could fuck me harder. Not satisfied with that, it always finished off by gluing my eyes shut with its digital jizz. So while X-Plane has always been a favorite uncle, OpenGL has been his creepy friend that you'd only allow babysit a ginger stepchild. In recent versions of X-Plane 11, some of the issues presented by OpenGL included random stutters, usually when you were trying to take off or land an aircraft, or the occasional crash to desktop. It had become really frustrating. In some versions of X-Plane 11, playing in VR was like entering a whole new minigame called There's a Fucking Psychopath Hiding in the Back of Your Plane. I'll explain what I mean, it was like waking up in the cockpit with a hangover, only to be suddenly cracked across the head with a baseball bat, and just as soon as you regain consciousness, the same thing happens again, about 30 or 40 times a minute. Some versions were quite okay, but others could only be recommended honestly to those attempting weight loss through bulimia. With the history out of the way, we'll jump forward to about a week ago. After two weeks in lockdown, I was unsure what day it was, and more importantly, I was unsure whether I was having an orgasm or I'd just burst another blister. The news that the 11x.50 beta with Vulcan had just released was very welcome indeed, something new to get my calloused hands on. Because of my urge to try out new things, I constantly flit between beta and stable. If beta is good, I stick with it, if it's being a dick, I switch back to stable. And this is the advice I would give everybody playing flight sims. Betas are not for everybody. If you're a whiny cunt with anger issues, stick to stable. It's not for you. Not being prone to hype, I installed the beta, and when it was installed, I set up a flight. The first load, giggity, took what seemed like a lifetime, but to say I was pleased with the results would be an absolute understatement. 
My frame rates on average had improved by between 50 and 100%. To elaborate, on average I was getting between 40 and 50 frames per second on the ground, 50 to 60 at about a thousand shoes over urban areas, and about 60 to 70 over less built up and wilderness areas, going up to about 90 when over the sea. This was running at 1080p with ortho scenery. As promised, the stutters had all but disappeared, but there were a couple of issues remaining. The cockpit shadows were extremely jagged, and the cloud shadows were flashing like the neon lights of a Turkish brothel window. In VR, the results were an additional welcome surprise. On the ground, it stayed at around 35 to 40, but it was still playable. However, in the air, over all areas, it never really dipped below 45, and that's at 1,000 feet AGL. I would love to show you a video of this, but I was having too much fun playing and testing it, so fuck you guys. So last week if Vulcan had pulled alongside me, asking me to get in his car on the pretext of seeing his new bunny, I'd have said to hell with the bunny sir, get out your cock, I've some gratitude to show. Before you all rush to the beta, there is a further development. The old axiom, everything is subject to change, remains true. Unfortunately earlier this week, beta 2 was released, and unfortunately it was a bit of a disaster. X-Plane programming god Ben Supnik announced there were a few issues with the update. I wonder if he knows his surname as an anagram of Icebunk. Guess he does now. Furthermore, the gains in Beta 2 and 3 were a little more unpredictable than the initial release. They were less across the board. As you can see, on the ground in a moderately built up area, I was getting about a measly 10% increase. It's still an increase and I'll take everything I can get. In the air, over the same area, I was getting around 15-20%, to 20 but this fluctuated quite a bit. On the ground, in a less built up area, I was gaining around 20%. In the air over the same area, I was gaining on average around 30%. In another area, I discovered previous to Vulcan, I had actually achieved better results. The differences were negligible, but they were still present. Using the same area in the air, I also noticed a slight decrease in frame rates. Again, negligible. Both of the preceding examples use ortho tiles and a few small bits of scenery. So what does it look like in an area that hasn't been touched, an out-of-the-box area as such? Previously when using areas without ortho, I had noticed discernible frame rate drops, particularly in comparison with the same areas once ortho was installed. Here on the ground I was gaining about 20%, and in the air I was gaining about 30-35%. Just for reference, here's a quick snapshot of my settings. And do remember, if you're using the beta and want to run the Vulkan API, don't forget to enable it here. The last test I wanted to perform was with a more complex aircraft. The results were pretty much the same, or even possibly slightly worse than pre-Vulcan. This is a brand new beta, so the situation is very fluid. And throughout the course of the betas, there are going to be some ups and downs, gains and losses, and some bugs as programmers get to grips with all the facets of the API. So what's my preliminary verdict? If the initial beta is anything to go by, Vulcan shows a lot of promise. And as a follow-on from OpenGL, Vulcan is definitely the logical choice. The dum -tsh. Star Wars jokes aside, it's an interesting time for X-Plane 11, and it's something I'm going to be following with keen interest. Before you install the beta, there is one more thing to keep in mind. Currently, very few of the add-ons work. That includes third-party aircraft, weather, scenery, and ATC apps. All of the laminar aircraft work, although some work better than others. To make a final point on Vulcan, there are a lot of people incessantly screeching at their flight sim developer of choice to drop everything they're doing and immediately switch to Vulcan. Whether you go on the forums of 777 Studios or Eagle Dynamics, you will hear the same chorus call. What about Vulcan? You need to switch to Vulcan. I've been seeing this since it was first announced. While there are definite and clear advantages when compared to OpenGL, I don't think when compared to DirectX 11 or 12 the advantages are going to be that great. Don't get me wrong, there may be improvements, but I just don't think they will be as great as the ones harvested from switching from OpenGL to Vulkan. There will be teething problems, and you can count on the flight sim community to mark each and every one of them with a massive menstrual meltdown. So while I don't believe Vulcan is the promised messiah of APIs for flight sims, I don't believe it's the Reverend Peter Popov either. To sum up, Vulcan has demonstrated that its candy can taste very good indeed, but it might be worth waiting a little while before you get in the car, and a little longer before you put anything else in your mouth, if you know what I mean. And on that note, in these trying times, I wish you all the very best. Wash your fucking hands, stay at least two metres away from the nearest person, because that fucking person could be me, and... After all that, I thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to dislike or tell me to go fuck myself below.